So I had an idea I wanted to explore recently. What is the average person's gaming computer? Not what the PC Master Race wants you to think, which is GTX 1080 Ti or GTFO. No, what does the average gamer actually play on? Well, I scoured through Steam Analytics and I've put together what I think it is right over here. So let's check it out. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Craft Computing and I'm Jeff. Don't worry about the fact that I'm in my garage and not in my studio. I still have beer. This project started out back when I was rebuilding my studio computer. Click right here for that project. But that got me thinking, what does the average gaming PC actually look like? Does it handle modern games? What upgrades are available to me? Do I even need to upgrade? I started by just looking at the graphics cards. Now, if you listen to the enthusiast crowd, they'll tell you that you need a GTX 1070 if you want to play anything beyond Solitaire. Me personally, that's never been my experience, and I've built a fair number of machines, down from the lowly potato mashers to the high-end, water-cooled, light-dimming beasts that they are. The results were actually just a little bit surprising. The most popular card on Steam right now is the GTX 1060. I guess that's not all that surprising. The second most popular card, that's a GTX 750 Ti. I included the top 32 cards from Steam Analytics in my breakdown. Uh, they ranged everything from an NVIDIA 9500 GT and a GT210 all the way up to a GTX 1080. Note there's actually very few top tier cards on this list. What I found in this breakdown was that less than 18% of you are actually running a GTX 960 or 1060 or higher card. Uh, the rest of you are running cards that are a little bit older, from the solid to the, we'll just say downright embarrassing. As for the rest of the hardware, you're all rocking a quad core of unknown age and four gigabytes of RAM. So that's actually what I put together right over here. The motherboard is actually on the back burner for another project, but it's another Chinese X79 motherboard, this time in a full ATX form factor. I've got an E5 2643 quad core processor that I had on a bookshelf. Uh, it's a 3.33 gigahertz. Typically with hyper threading, I've actually disabled it to more closely emulate an i5 Sandy Bridge chip. My CPU benchmarks put this right around on par with an i5-2500, not overclocked. I have 4 gigabytes of Kingston 1333 DDR3 running in dual channel, an EVGA 430 watt power supply, a GTX 760 with 2 gigabytes of video memory, a 2 terabyte Western Digital Black, and probably the ugliest case you've ever seen, a Sun Ultra 20 workstation. Based on my research, this is about as close as I can come to the average gamer's computer. The GPU is probably a little bit on the high side. A GTX 660 would have worked a little bit better, uh, but you work with what you got. This is what I got, and I figured it was close enough. Now, on to the benchmarks. And we're back. You might notice the wardrobe change. It's actually two days later. Uh, benchmarking took a little bit longer than anticipated, not because of GPU performance, which I actually did anticipate. Uh, it was actually system memory, uh, only four gigs of RAM. Some of the games, one of the games refused to launch. Uh, Just Cause 3 refused to launch. Uh, Doom and GTA 5 all had significant stuttering down into the single frame per second. Uh, the games were literally unplayable. 
after the RAM upgrade. Just Cause 3 launched just fine. Uh, actually averaged all the way up into the 50 frames per second mark. We did see lows dip all the way down to 22 frames per second. So we're right on the edge of being able to play this one, but bear in mind we were at very high settings. You could easily sacrifice some graphical uh, fidelity and get this game very playable. GTA 5 with a mix of high and very high settings was very playable all the way up to 74 frames per second on average. We did see 0.1% lows at 36 frames, but really that's not very bad and not noticeable in your game experience. The limiting factor for this game was actually the amount of video memory I have on this card. It's only a 2 gigabyte card. Uh, GTA 5 used every bit of that to get these graphics out. I could have actually lowered the graphics a little bit more to up my frames a little bit. I wanted to see what the worst case scenario was for this card though. Do manage to get an average of 61 frames per second, which is very playable, although we did see lows down into the mid-20s on that game as well. Uh, so again, we're starting to push the limits of this hardware with uh, some of the modern titles that are out there. If this is your main gaming rig and you mostly play Twitch shooters, MMOs, or online sports games, there's really no need to upgrade anytime soon. Uh, every game I tested in that category easily scored well over 100 frames per second with 0.1% lows down. I believe the lowest was about 80 frames per second. So playable by any metric and competitive by every metric. If you're thinking about making the jump to VR, you're going to want to add a rig to this. Uh, the Superposition VR benchmark averaged only 57 frames per second, and really that's going to give you a terrible experience. I know the Oculus headset is all the way down to $400 with the touch controllers right now. It's a great value. You're going to need to upgrade your rig first though. So are there upgrades to be made here? Absolutely. Uh, this architecture is fairly old. The GTX 760, the Sandy Bridge i5, and even having only 4 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, that's certainly being a hindrance to gaming performance. Not that you can't perform and, like I said, lower some of your graphics levels down to a, an acceptable minimum, but uh, if you want to rock modern games, VR, you're definitely going to need to step your rig up in the near future. How much you step it up is really going to be up to you and what your budget can sustain. Uh, you can get a Ryzen R3 or an i5, which are great all-around performing chips, especially for gaming and even some light content creation. Those are going to outperform a Sandy Bridge i5. You can get a GTX 1050 Ti, which by all metrics I've seen is about 30% faster than the current card. As for RAM, 8GB I would call the minimum for a gaming desktop today, uh, outside of Twitch shooters and Dota 2. Uh, it is starting to become a limiting factor, and in fact I would recommend bumping up to 16 gigs if your budget can support it. As far as storage goes, the loading times weren't terrible with the 2 terabyte spinning disk from Western Digital. Uh, a solid state boot drive would certainly increase the performance of this machine. I would avoid doing that just to up your gaming performance though. A solid state versus a spinning disk makes no difference in your frames per second. So what did you guys think of this project? I thought it was a fun trip down recent memory lane, to be honest, but uh, the GTX 760, while a capable card, is starting to show its age, as is the i5, as is the system memory, as is the two terabytes of spinning storage. Uh, there's certainly upgrades to be made here, but I think I really got a fair representation of what the average gaming machine is. Uh, you might be higher on the CPU, but lower on the graphics card, or vice versa. Uh, I was trying to show a balanced out-of-date rig here, and what upgrade paths you might have available to you, which I will be exploring in some future videos, so do stay tuned for that. So thank you guys for watching. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Give me some suggestions in the comment section about what content you'd like to see on here. I really want to hear your feedback on that. Uh, I do have a case review coming up next week that I think you guys will find interesting. Uh, stay tuned for that. I'll catch you next time.